topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio or its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Well, good afternoon and welcome. Bill Martinez here. Great to have you with us sharing a part of your day. The question is, is the ring closing in on the Biden family business and the brand Rico Enterprise, right? Well, many people are asking that question and frustrated because of the due process. But a due process is important. You know, you don't want to be like some people and just so quickly react and throw people into jail or convict them without, uh, you know, the due process and the rule of law. The rule of law, I know it's stretched, and uh, but it still exists here in America. And it's up to us to continue to hold the line so that the rule of law applies to everybody. In this particular case, I understand because you say, Bill, but what about the Bidens? Well, the dramatic and unexpected proceedings in the Hunter Biden plea deal that was in front of the district judge last month was a pivotal moment on the pathway to bigger events, including possible impeachment proceedings against President Joe Biden, Biden and beginning to factually look like a RICO level racketeering. Well, here to tell us more about it is Colonel John Mills, the former director of cybersecurity policy strategy and international affairs at the Department of Defense. Colonel Mills, welcome to the show. Good to have you with us. Hey, Bill. Thank you. It's an honor to be on your show. Well, uh, we need your help here, buddy, because uh, the mainstream media, and I would dare say the fourth branch of government that we're seeing laid out before us, you know, Donald Trump talked about the deep state. Little did we know and realize that the deep state is becoming a fourth branch of government of unelected bureaucrats. Yeah, I actually call it the fourth, fifth, and sixth branches of government. The fourth being the administrative state, mm -hmm. and the fifth being the marriage of law enforcement and intelligence and the fusion with them within big tech. And then sixth are the uh, the myriad of nonprofits. But uh, yeah, they are definitely um, colluding to uh, sit on this story and try mm -hmm. to stifle it. I'm going to borrow that from you, uh, Colonel. I, I don't know the last time we talked if you put it out that way, but uh, that is brilliant. That's because that is exactly where we are right now. There is, uh, you know, strata and dimension to the deep state, which, uh, you know, makes it complicated and sometimes hard for us to understand at times. But we know that somebody's pulling the strings to all this, right? Absolutely. Uh, there is collusion. There's a, an incentive to keep information from the American people and just keep the status quo as is. Because if you're part of the swamp, normally you kind of could get bought off. Now, most people in the swamp, and it wasn't until the very end of my career where I realized I was right. This thing Donald J. Trump was calling the swamp and the deep state right. did exist. I was right in the middle of it. But right. many are, are bought off and they just don't, they, there's an, an incentive to not fight against it. Just go along with the flow. Exactly. Well, there's a lot of pressure to stay with the flow, right? I mean, you've got the cocktail parties, you've got promotions, uh, acceptance from the peer group because everybody is doing it. You know, what was that like for you, Colonel? Did you kind of like have an epiphany at three o'clock in the morning? Go, oh my God, I am the swamp. Well, it was uh, actually uh, July of 2016, rushing to a meeting in the Pentagon, rushing to a meeting, and that's what you do in the in the Pentagon is rush to meetings. And I ran into somebody of a, of, of, from the Bush administration. These are the Obama years, remember? Right. And uh, so ran into him, and great guy. I trusted him, looked up to him, a friend, mentor, and I just. I knew he was involved in Republican politics. I said, "Hey, you're gonna you're gonna support Trump at the convention, right?" I'd actually been a Cruz guy, but I, I knew this guy well and felt okay to talk about these matters. Um, mm -hmm. And his response changed everything. His response was, "No, we see more opportunities with her." And right then, right then and there, I just uh, 
in a nanosecond, my whole career flashed in front of me and I just almost wow. lunged at him and said, who is we and what opportunities do you see? And from that point forward, everything Donald J. Trump had said made sense. And I realized I'm right in the middle of it. I'm right in the middle of the swamp. Yeah, little did you know. And with her, of course, he meant Hillary Clinton. Uh, and it was interesting uh, when he talked about the opportunity. Did he talk about the opportunity of the administrative state and all that you've talked about, these other uh, branches of unelected officials that to have nothing to do with the consent of the governed? Uh, you know, uh, did, did he enumerate or you just uh, you knew exactly what he was talking about? I, I knew exactly. Well, him being in the building, being invited up back to be part of a graybeard panel to look over a deep problem and provide that sage guidance and counsel mm -hmm. in response. That was reflective of what happens when you play along with the Uniparty in the swamp. Exactly. He was a he was a bushy yet was invited back during the Obama years. Why? Because he was considered neutered and okay to deal with. Right. Um, well, and, and to think that here you are at the Pentagon. I mean, you're, you're talking the nerve central, uh, if you might, the, the brains of, uh, of governance, so to speak. Is that fair to say? Oh, absolutely. This is where the action's at. You want to stay in the D.C. area so you can be invited to these, you know, the Atlantic Council, uh, Center for Security and International Studies, CSIS, the Council on Foreign Relations. You want to be close, you can quickly pop into these meetings, these, and they occur all the time, as you, you think your, your calendar is clear for a week, and within minutes, I mean, you know, 10 things get on, jump on your calendar. Exactly. You, you want to be in the game, and, yeah. and that was an example right there, a, a, a Republican, in the building during the blue team tenure. And his response was, we see more opportunities with her. Is that when you started to see the whole idea of a uniparty? Yeah, right, right there. I'm, I just, I was stunned. I mean, mm -hmm. I was, I was, I, I had to get going to my meeting, but from that point onward, I knew immediately mm -hmm. every, everything that Donald J. Trump had said, I said, now it makes sense. Now exactly. It makes perfect sense. Well, you talk about being near where the seat of power is, and probably that's why it's so clear that um, Barack Obama never left, never left town. And an absolutely unprecedented move, and Obama loved the term unprecedented. unprecedented. Um, he decided to stay and live in D.C. So uh, there's no law against it. It's definitely uh, a breaks tradition. It, break, it breaks the established norm. So clearly he was making a statement that, um, you know, he was staying in the game. Mm -hmm. Well, not to mention, he pretty well made it clear in an interview that if he had his dream, he, he wouldn't be interested in, in having a third term as president. But, uh, you know, to stay home in his sweats and to be able to have the ear of the, uh, of the reigning president, um, was a uh, powerful position and something that he desired. Yeah, well, I mean, just like Bill thought Hillary was going to easily take uh, take the uh, the mantle in 2016, and he mm -hmm. could just uh, uh, futz around the house. Well, even before that, though, even before that, he thought for sure that she was going to be able to overcome this junior senator, that it wasn't his time, mm -hmm. that he was going to have to wait it out, and it was her turn to take over, right? Well, yeah, yeah. They, well, that got interrupted in 2008, but that mm -hmm. was the, the real story of the 2008 campaign was not that uh, um, John McCain lost gracefully, which he seemed intent on. Yes. The real story was that uh, Barack had beaten Hillary during the primary and upended the, uh, Dyna, the Clinton dynasty. So that was the real story of 2008. But OK, so took an eight year hiatus. He still got some good gigs during it. You know, she had a classified server uh, in her ba bathroom downstairs or something of that effect. Right. Uh, hey, you know, and uh, just kind of, okay, we put put it back eight years and uh, we made it work and now was her time. And, and, and she utilized that time to establish the Clinton Foundation, which uh, did very well for her. And I think also, uh, you know, set up the party for some future debts and commitments down the road. We're talking with Colonel John Mills, retired, the former director of cybersecurity policy strategy and international affairs at the Department of Defense. Uh, 
you know, when you when you think back uh, with, you know, Joe Biden's encumbrances and what he's entangled and how he's been captured, whether we're talking about Ukraine, China, Romania, I mean, go down the list. It is long and stellar. Uh, it all reeks of uh, corruption and pay to play. But uh, you also have to consider Hillary Clinton and the Clinton Foundation, John Kerry, what he was doing and with his side hustle. Uh, I, you know, John, I got to tell you, I, I can't help but wonder if, uh, you know, if Barack Obama was getting his beak wet, because after all, this is the Holy Trinity, you know, without him, but in his administration, two former secretary of states and his own vice president uh, working a side hustle for personal uh, gain. Well, they learned uh, while Clinton uh, Clinton was in office, they learned uh, the side hustle of this is why I see the six branch of government of oh, the nonprofits. I love mm -hmm. nonprofits. Right. I love the IRA. OK, there's a total makes sense. We should have nonprofits. You got to remember uh, a lot of these nonprofits are, are are monsters. You know, University of Pennsylvania, it's like a 40 billion 40 billion uh, value um, endowment, uh, you know, Harvard, uh, you know, I think it's well north of 100 billion. These are monstrosities, uh, but they're but they're legally a nonprofit. Yeah. Um, and then you got the UPenn Biden Center. We can't find the IRS Form 990, a required filing to uh, um, give transparency on their financials. We can't find the UPenn Biden uh, 990. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we don't know we don't know what or what, no, you know, that part of the unanswered questions in the Biden crime family. Mm -hmm. But they, they learned the game of the nonprofits during the 90s with Haiti. So they took a poor, oh, pathetic yeah. country uh, mm -hmm. uh, and they learned the art of money laundering through the nonprofits. Uh, now, not every nonprofit who went to Haiti was dirty, but uh, let's just face it, between the U.N. and others, uh, please, anybody who takes offense to this, say, please show me the rigorous financial oversight of the financial flow into Haiti and then where it went. Exactly. Because 20 plus years later, 25 plus years later, it's a mess as always. It's a mess as always, despite the billions. Right. But they learned, that's where they learned the art. And this is where, this is where, uh, 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 Lunch Pucket Joe learned and his son learned the art. Well, okay, mm -hmm. if Haiti was good, what about Ukraine? And 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 I was and, in and, and Ukraine was already ready made. I mean, they've been laundering money forever. I mean, they, they're they are black belt, ten degree black belts in money laundering, right? Well, it's uh, I, I I try to be careful about talking about Ukraine because there's a lot of good people there. There's mm -hmm. a lot of Russian organized crime that operates out of Ukraine without the consent of, of the ruling government. It's a mess. I've known that for years. Yeah. But, but that's kind of, it's kind of like us though, John, here in America, we have people that are misrepresenting American values. I mean, I see what's happening in Lahaina right now. And a lot of what's going on there is just a, a microcosm of what happened in Ukraine, what happened in Haiti. Uh, you know, people who uh, had money and power were able to come over and take over local governance. And I, I think it's quite fascinating to study, you know, how the chickens have come home to roost, because in a sense, we've got, um, you know, social media oligarchs that swing a big stick. You know, you've got uh, corporate America, uh, these uh, venture capitalists, uh, we got Vanguard, uh, uh, BlackRock and State Street that are swinging a big stick. And it's, it's almost like they're so big. And as we were talking to another guest earlier today, John, they're without accountability. And they come in and they yeah. rape, they pillage the resources and uh, end up making us all look like, you know, and when I say us, I'm talking about we the people who are good intentioned, but we have unfor unfortunately people that control, you know, the Biden brand and, uh, you know, whether it's the Clintons and what they did in Haiti, and other stories like that that misrepresent us. And then and then we're confused because, we, you know, we talk to people in Haiti or we talk to people uh, in other parts of the world that whenever a nat uh, national disaster occurs, America is one. We're, we're in front of the line to go and support and help these people out. And after it's all said and done, they say, well, thank you very much. You, you, and you go, wait, what are you talking about? You know, we gave you all this money. Well, you know, what we don't realize and what we don't hear about 
are the strings that are attached politically that end up, you know, controlling their governments and uh, having the will uh, of a small group of oligarchs or, you know, people here, leadership elites in our country that end up uh, raping and pillaging these countries. I mean, that sounds extreme. And I'm sorry if that does a little bit, John, but this is my observation. I don't know how you feel. Well, okay, let's break apart, uh, break down some of the things you said, because you had another number of components. Um, let's first, uh, for any of these complex operations, the first and foremost thing that should always be appointed, whether it's a UN operation, a US operation, multinational, is what we call an inspector general. An inspector general in the US government actually has law enforcement and arrest authorities. They are badged and normally gunned uh, we we you know, with weapons. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's their job is to go through and do uh, financial audits and inspections to see that the money is being spent properly. We had an inspector general for Afghanistan. We had an inspector general for Iraq. Uh, somehow, even at this point in time, almost two years down the road, we still don't have an inspector general for Ukraine. And that's, you know, my policy is no further funds until we have an inspector general for Ukraine that ha can hold those accountable. Exactly. There, are, there are many who were went to prison in Iraq and Afghanistan because of financial malfeasance in some of these operations. Now, uh, let's talk about the blue team in Hawaii, and that is a problem. Um, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, I have a lot of family in Hawaii. Uh, uh, the people of Hawaii are not doing well, and that means the traditional citizens, those who uh, may actually have Hawaiian heritage, Hawaiian blood in them, but those right. who are also uh, long long standing citizens, people think, oh, everything's going great in Hawaii. No, Hawaii is an absolute abject. It's it's one step away from Haiti. Mm -hmm. It's the after count the, the third the third largest state to lose population after New York and California is Hawaii because the moneyed interests of the vacation uh, industry, they make money. Yeah. Uh, the defense contractors and the defense personnel that are rotating through our many, many military bases, they make money. Uh, the people of Hawaii, frankly, uh, have an, uh, it's horrible. Yeah, prices mm -hmm. are high. Right. Uh, housing prices are high. Uh, getting, getting goods and products to Hawaii is expensive because of the Jones Act. And all of this is big, out of control government, and it is a money laundering operation in many ways. Mm -hmm. Because the more they spend on these activities, but you had a uh, uh, in Maui, you had a, a director of emergency management uh, uh, that uh, was totally unqualified. Not there are certifications for emergency management. I don't right. believe I don't believe he was certified in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, I don't. I, uh, I don't think so, John. And let me just so you know, you may not be aware, but my daughter. Uh, they lived in Lahaina. I say live because now they, they're temporarily up in Napili. And uh, so she, by the grace of God, made it out uh, just minutes ahead of all the fires. She was at her home in Lahaina when everything, you know, took off. And it took her, if you're familiar with that uh, small stretch of street from uh, from Front Street to the freeway. And she lived uh, just on the other side of the, the cannery um, uh, uh, what is it? The, the the cannery shopping center there. And so that's about two miles. It took her two hours to travel that two miles and she barely made it out before the fire, you know, took over. Yeah, it's horrible. Well, I mean, I, I, I pray that uh, she and uh, her family are OK. Uh, um, we have where well, we you know the public number is over 100, but we also have close to a thousand uh, missing. missing. This yeah. is a well, shame. And I also heard, John, that they found 184 bodies uh, that they collected on, I think it's either Molokai or Lanai that, uh, you know, people just have died. Of, and, and they're not reporting those numbers. Yeah, it, it, it's it's shameful what's going on. There's a horrible news blackout that is not taking what happened here seriously. Exactly. And it's like, oh, well, another accident, another, you know, global, global warming, uh, climate change. No, no, no. This is this is human made. Yeah, it is human made. It's human made malfeasance it's and not. disaster. Exactly. This, this emergency management director won't release water because of ideology. Uh, this, water, this is water. Water equity? Yeah. What, what is that? What is that? Yeah. We're just we're just making these terms up here. Water equity. People are dying, and we're not going to release water. But this is their 
their cult and god of their war on dams, uh, whether it be in uh, uh, Hawaii or or California or many other states, mm -hmm. where they are just obsessed with destroying any ability to retain water, uh, and this war on ah because. We have to let it because we took this away from Native American tribes and uh, dams are bad. Uh, why don't we ask the Native American tribes for one, one thing? Because actually water retention uh, does them uh, uh, and many others very, uh, very well. So, uh, uh, you know, this is just horrible. And, uh, you know, the dryness uh, of what's going on. And I and I you know, I'm not. I'm not trying to say in any way, shape, or form this is what caused it, but you have the uh, the Chinese DACI one satellite that uh, was shooting lasers, actually lidar, which is a mm -hmm. form of a laser right. uh, for atmospheric tests. Uh, there did seem to be some NASA uh, awareness and cooperation, but we don't know what we, we that was a six that was a minimum of a six thousand pound payload when that went up in uh, uh in 2022 mm -hmm. you could hide a lot in six thousand pounds so yeah. we right. have there's no independent verification or validation of what was in the launch uh, uh what was actually launched by the long march 4c last year uh for the daki one mm -hmm. uh it has light does it have another does it have more of a directed energy we weapon you know, all you have to do is you got to get a laser with, uh, got to get it up to 500, 500 degrees for, and that was, that was wild brush fire, just screaming for an opportunity to inf ignite. And at 500 degrees, uh, it doesn't immediately uh, combust, but it will shortly. You get it up to, you know, north of 600 and north, it'll almost instantaneously combust. Yes. So, you know, and people are going, oh, come on, you can't do that from space, actually. And I published on my sub stack. Actually, I published some old old NASA papers. That's totally within the realm of possibilities. And they're going, oh, you need such a huge power source. Well, isn't that interesting? China in the South China Morning Post a week ago, just before before the fire was a thing, mm -hmm. announced a huge breakthrough in laser technology. So. The power and cooling requirements have, have, have incredibly uh, become uh, allowed a much more powerful uh, uh, laser in a much smaller package. So people saying, oh, come on, 6,000 pounds. Are you kidding me? So you can do a lot with 6,000 pounds. Exactly. Exactly. Well, this is the thing. You know, we don't know what we don't know. And uh, unfortunately, in this arena, in the absence of fact, opinion rules. And so there's lots of opinions. There's uh, uh, anecdotal information coming from uh, people, residents there in Lahaina, speaking of uh, some electrical blasts and, and bomb blasts even that uh, they found to be quite you know, suspicious and, and alarming. And that this was like something they'd never experienced before. So does this add credence to the possibility of what the Chinese could be doing number one number two i'd be curious to know how much of maui uh do the chinese own because uh the other thing that was brought to my attention in january john there was a meeting of uh of officials there in maui uh dreaming up this vision of turning maui into what they called a smart city so they want to, they're, they're forecasting and envisioning something like Oahu uh, there on Front Street. So all those boutique shops would go away. So you got a lot of eminent domain. You've got a lot of things that would have to take place in order for them to realize their vision. Now, it just so happens that you have this uh, devastating fire that wipes out Lahaina uh, in ways that uh, almost gives them a clean slate. And again, that's just one of those theories. And, you know, for those that want to be fitted for a tin hat, I get that. Uh, I'm just laying it out there. Oh, absolutely. And this is absolutely within the realm of the possibility. Look, at, it was weaponized to even question the origin of uh, the Wuhan virus. Now it's just, now we even have the intel community saying, yeah, it probably was a lab leak. And but hold on a second. For two years, you were uh, going to be arrested and charged with treason. You mentioned lab leak. And, well, well, John, and let, me, let me tell you this here real quick, because we have to be careful, because in this particular platform, uh, that we're associated with through YouTube, we have to be careful about talking. This is what it's come down to. Uh, 
you got to be careful about what you talk about the C word. And I'm not talking cancer. I'm talking COVID because there are restrictions. And if we cross the line, uh, I get put into YouTube jail. And uh, this has happened a couple of times. So I'm just only casting that warning that we, you know, just and, and it also it comes with the warning to our audience to know that in this particular arena, we cannot be um, totally upfront and have a free and uh, free engagement on this. We are restricted because uh, YouTube has decided that we must follow the guidelines of the WHO. If we violate that, then we violate uh, what they call their community standards. So I'll let people to add and decide what that means. But uh, I, I just want to back away from that if we if you don't mind. Sure, sure. Absolutely. But uh, we also got uh, we also got wildfires raging in Washington state and uh, multiple parts of Canada. So the lazing, uh, the lazing uh, um, possibility is uh well we got multiple wildfires ranging in multiple places one of the most efficient ways to deliver this on scale and again six thousand we got laser units now that are used to knock down drones you only have to you only have to get a drone up to about two to three hundred degrees um mm -hmm. because that's when the plastic and the, the circuitry starts to melt mm -hmm. um so you only got to get it up to 200 300 degrees but you know those units are well under 500 pounds so you got six thousand pounds to play with yeah. in the public you know, the publicly disclosed number for the DACI one satellite it could be far more than that but mm -hmm. uh this is uh ladies and gentlemen uh you know there's absolutely within the tech the, the, the technically possible not saying in any way that is what happened, but it's awfully curious. Yeah, and nothing's being said about this. And uh, it, it seems that with anything that has to do with the CCP, our government ends up becoming co-conspirators. And uh, as we know from reporting from, you know, the likes of Miranda Devine and Peter Schweitzer, we're realizing that more and more of our elected officials are, as they call them out, as being elite captured by the CCP. So they, they've become co-conspirators with their plan, you know, to overtake the United States and to control the world. Uh, right. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, but again, many of these other things uh, uh, are now turning out to, uh, turning out to be true. Senator Rand mm -hmm. Paul has uncovered emails from government officials on the other topic. Um, you know, and now we know that there is direct connection that there was U.S. government money uh, uh, through grants supporting that other activity. And same thing here. We know what's going on here. How much did how much did the U.S. government know about the DACI one and its payload and uh, you know, I what I, I put out a Substack thing. You know, we flew deep and wide over the Soviets in the Cold War until they were able to do something about it. That means send up their SA-2 missile to knock down our U-2. Mm -hmm. But we flew, we flew for years, not just the U-2, other aircraft. Uh, right. And until the Russians could do something about it, guess what? We did it. We pushed the boundary. But at the mm -hmm. same time, you know, they they were communists. We're going right. to do where, you know, we're going to, it was a bare knuckle brawl uh, battle for survival, but exactly. right here, do we have the capabilities to detect lasers? And, and even if we did detect it, what are we going to do about it? Do we, the Chinese are going to get until Donald J. Trump was the one that showed until you do something about it, exactly. the Chinese are going to push the, they're going to go right over the guardrail and they're going to do whatever they want to do until we do something about it. That's when he hit their, where it hurts in their in in the financials and uh, exactly. their their pursuit of the dollar as the world reserve currency. He could cru him and Navarro could crush them in a uh, nanosecond using those tools. Uh, this administration either isn't aware of these tools. They got Janet Yellen, crazy cat lady, who uh, you know. I mean, you got to know when to get off the stage here. I mean, she, exactly. she you know, um, unimpressive, uh, unimpressive on the international stage. Anybody who says, "Oh, you're being misogynist." No, absolutely not. Uh, I'm being uh, honest, uh, transparent, and realistic. She's, um, no she's no Condoleezza Rice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's just uh, she. They, they they clean up the floor with her. It's absolutely ridiculous. But she's not the only one bowing. You got Tony Blinken bowing, then yeah. you got Lurch who goes over there the three in a row and Lurch yeah. bows. 
you know, uh, uh, he's so tall, he has to bow anyway, but it's just, it's just, it's pathetic. These, it's sheer, their, their mind are so straight jacketed by ideology. They, can, they cannot articulate a clear and coherent sentence mm -hmm. to articulate the American position or agenda. In fact, they, but they don't like to, because that's, that's not nice advocating for America. Well, hold it. Who's who's paying their salary? Uh, no, right. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, exactly. Uh, yeah. We're talking with Colonel John Mills, a former director of cybersecurity policy, strategy, and international affairs at the Department of Defense. You know, John, I want to back up just a little bit because uh, you were talking about, you know, the DACI-1 and, and how much we don't know there and uh, the lack of attention and response by our government. And here, uh, you know, it wasn't that long ago, we had a spy balloon traversing yeah. across the United States over, you know, uh, military installations. And and Joe Biden just watched it like. What, well, what, what? well, just just like and just like the uh, the news flash of the Chinese in, in Cuba, which to me was a non story. Oh they, they've been there 20 years. But mm -hmm. what did what did they do about the spy balloon? First, they denied it. Then, then they acknowledged it, said it was no big deal. But then they said it was Trump's fault. What did they do about the Chinese in uh, and reopening, which they never closed the Lourdes spy complex anyway? Mm -hmm. uh, effectively, when the Russians left in about 2001, the Chinese were there and immediately uh, took took uh, uh, became a lessor or leasee on that facility. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, what did they do first? They denied it. Then they said it was no big deal. Then they said it was Trump's fault. Uh, same thing here. You know, first they're, they're not saying anything, uh, but th this is their routine over and over again with the Chinese. Now, uh, they are probably driving the Chinese crazy because on one hand, uh, you know, it's becoming pretty clear and factual that uh, Hunter and his dad did take payoffs mm -hmm. between the 1023s and the suspicious activity reports from Treasury. Um, it's getting pretty undeniable. And uh, when, when, they, when they start the impeachment inquiry, that'll be laid out for everybody, not just the small sliver of Congress members that are congressional members that have seen those. Um, but uh, um, so the Chinese are probably going, what's the matter with that? You know, hey, we paid them off starting in 2014. And that that allowed us to build islands, right? Because he started taking money in 2014 and all these other things over the years. We've been paying him. We've been paying the UPenn Biden, UPenn Center to give the UPenn Biden Center. Exactly. Obviously, that means everything we're doing is OK. But at the same time, um, um, Biden and Schumer are being harder on chips than even Trump was, at, which is hugely uh, painful to China. And China's going, what is going on here? We're paying mm -hmm. you, you gave us green light, and now on the other hand, you're uh, trying to really stick it to us, uh, with a, you're trying to shank us with uh, with the chips thing. I mean, they're going, Are, is this person, uh, have, does this person uh, have their senses? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Great question, uh, welcome to the crowd. We, we're wondering the same thing. Right. Uh, so they're saying, hey, we paid you good money. You should be doing what we said. And uh, and then he'll uh, he'll stay. He'll be vague about Taiwan and then he'll mm -hmm. make a, a very provocative statement about Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And uh, so so w which one is it? And, you know, the, the, the 2023 National Defense Authorization Act made it crystal clear we will defend Taiwan. We are turning them into the like what Great Britain was in 1940. Mm -hmm. We formally titled a Lend-Lease Act for Taiwan. So the, the, the Chinese are apoplectic because they think they're dealing with a schizophrenic uh, president. Well, welcome to uh, welcome yeah, to our exactly. world. Now you know how we feel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God. I, I, you know, I want to talk to those 82 million people that voted for Joe Biden and say, what were you thinking? What, what did you think was going to happen? I mean, we, here we had four incredible years under Donald Trump, with all due respect. I, I mean, we're energy independent. Our border is being uh, secured. Our national standing had been restored after eight bad years under Obama Biden. And um, pe more people working. Uh, people were actually smiling. They were actually happy. And uh, suddenly, you know, that was unacceptable. So now 82 million come together in a cabal and say, we got to get rid of the, you know, the best modern day president we've ever had. And let's bring Joe Biden into office because uh, 
you know, he's had 50 years in government and the 50 years that we've been able to see him perform, he he's just been an incredible ethical, compassionate, honest individual who is going to unite uh, America. I, it, it's like, what, what, what were you thinking? How, it, what it's, what it's, evidence did you have to think that he would do anything like that other than that's what the mainstream and the social media told you that he would do? Uh, it's the cancer uh, and toxic cancer of wokeism. And the blue team is just intent on being unhappy and they want to make everybody else unhappy. So we don't have any more evidence to point to than Seattle, San Francisco, Portland, New York. And the original model was how they destroyed Detroit in the 1970s. Exactly. But uh, Phoenix, I was out in Phoenix, total abject disaster. Hawaii, total abject disaster. And yet to somehow it's okay for them, but that oftentimes they represent uh, the upper tiers of income who often lead a, a, a very nice life in well-protected enclaves. And uh, the common talking point will always be, and with some of my relatives in Seattle and uh, Seattle and uh, um, Portland is, it's not that bad. Um, they're not saying that anymore about yeah. Seattle or Portland or San Francisco or any of these other places, but it's just this blue cult and just this unbelievable psychology of, you know, now we've got to make a utopia. We've got to make it equitable. So now everybody is equally miserable. And now that crime in my own county, in Prince William County, Virginia, where a crime is up 70%. Wow. Uh, is that equitable? Is that fair? Is that, is that social justice? Making sure everybody is, uh, everybody is subject to crime and is right. miserable. Yeah. That's, that's equality. That's, that's uh, social justice. No, that's craziness. Yeah. But they, in you know, yeah. to them, it doesn't matter because it's about intentions and what we intended to do. That's that's why uh, Obama got a Nobel Peace Prize within ninety days because he asked the Nobel Committee, "Why did you give it to him?" He, had, he just he just Showed came into up. office. <laughs> oh yeah, it's because of what he intends to do. So yeah. they couldn't care less about actual results. It's the it, it's what is the intention that's what matters could be you know absolute a uh, stalinist mass uh mass grave that doesn't matter right. it's what was intended did you have a good intention we want to make everything equal it's like yeah. okay well everybody should be equal but you can't assure equal outcome when you try to assure equal outcome it will be nothing but misery for all that's why you said the fundamental trans, uh, transformation of America sounded sweet, sounded nice, but the actualization of that was nothing less than social engineering. And we've had enough experience, but, you know, the American people have to wake up in mass. I mean, speaking of, of woke, they have got to wake up in mass and understand you've got to own your own knowledge. And I always say, John, you know, whenever people, you know, and our viewers who are watching us, that I challenge you to own your own knowledge. What we're sharing with you hopefully motivates you enough to do a deeper dive and find out, discover for yourself. So it's not just, a, you know, two people. It's not just Bill and John sitting there, you know, talking to you. And because maybe, you know, we connect with you and you, okay, you have some level of confidence. Don't take it wholesale. I challenge you to own your own knowledge, check it out for yourself, because we need a well-informed government. Our founding fathers, that's what they, and you talk about good intention. That was the intention of our founding fathers is that we would have an activated citizenry that would participate in the government, we the people, that it would be the consent of the governed. And in order to have the consent of the governed, you had to know what you were consenting to, to begin with, right? Yeah, absolutely. We just have an upside down world where we have school boards going crazy. Uh, and this is in my, my book one, uh, The Nation Will Follow. But it's just the, the craziness of school boards. Now my own, we have two school boards that suddenly in the last few days are now at full scale war with Governor Yunkin in uh, Virginia. Virginia they yes. said, yeah, we don't care what you think, Governor. We're going to do this anyway. 
my own county of Prince William and next door Fairfax. I expected Fairfax. They're they're crazy, but right. now it's my own county. And, you know, I'm a good friend of mine is running for the school board and has been running uh, even before this mess. Mm -hmm. uh, our our crime in our county is up 70 percent. Um, so this is this is insanity. Mm -hmm. This is this is the brave new world and utopia that uh, uh, the blue cult offers all of us. And uh, so, so no. typical. it's so typical, Colonel, because when you look at the blue states or blue sections within states uh, that have been blue pilled, uh, this is what follows. You've got uh, massive unemployment this uh, search for social engineering, uh, this manipulation of, of the masses that uh, they, they try to come up with these ideas that don't work, you know, you know no bail systems, uh, forget about crime and law in order, and then they wonder why it is such a mess. And then, you know, let's go ahead and throw all these um, mi illegal migrants who are coming into town in the, some of these states that said, you know, even New York had to finally say, we surrender. You know, here they are lauding that we're a sanctuary state, we're a sanctuary city, until they decided that, uh, you know, it's no longer feasible, right? Yeah, well, they're they're brain. They're so smart. They're stupid. Between uh, Adams in New York or the new wing, wingnut mayor in Chicago, uh, and because you know the, the the Chicago mayor, he used the term humanitarian crisis, and that is no kidding, a legal term from the United Nations. Because exactly. for for many years, I had to mm -hmm. as part of my official duties with in uniform or even out of uniform with the with the U.S. government. Uh, that actually is a legal threshold to actually initiate what's called a donors conference to convene uh, donors to come together to uh, commit money to, because you have to use the term humanitarian crisis. And so, you know, so that, you know, but the, the, the mayor there is so smart, he's stupid. And, uh, you know, we're losing more there uh, in, in one weekend than we lost in months in Iraq and Afghanistan and fentanyl. We're yeah. now losing 10,000 a month from fentanyl yeah. in a year. That's 120,000. Last year, we lost 70,000. Mm -hmm. That's more than the entire 40 years of combat in the Vietnam War plus the war on terror. We lost in one year in America. Fentanyl comes 100% from China, now made in uh, uh, finalized in northern Mexico under the supervision of Chinese paramilitary nationals brought across our open su southern border right. ten thousand a month through a cartel network oh by the way that is well established within the boundaries of our country that joe biden cares little about uh which is absolutely disgusting and then let's not even talk about the sex trafficking of seven eight year old uh, girls and boys and younger uh you know it's it's absolutely disgusting that america has become the number one purveyor consumer of uh of sex trafficking yeah absolutely uh, reprehensible the sound of freedom is correct uh but uh if this if this blue utopia was so compassionate and concerned with our society they'd be doing something about there's nothing compassionate about an uncontrolled southern border it just leads to violence and human misery through sex trafficking so uh, and, 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 every, and every form of evil, I might add, uh, Colonel, to your point, uh, we've got about uh, seven minutes left here. And I did want to come back to uh, this Hunter Biden plea deal and w what's happening, especially now of all people, uh, David Weiss uh, being selected as the special prosecutor for this whole mess. I mean, you know, talk about doing, you know, being the brain surgeon in the room, doing brain surgery on yourself. I mean, this is this is just uh, unbelievable. But uh, break that down for us where we are in this last uh, seven minutes that we have together. Well, I mean, so four key events have led it led to a crisis here on the blue team side of Hunter and his dad. Mm -hmm. um, it was the revelation of the form FD 1023s, which are law, mm -hmm. federal law enforcement uh, documentation right. of what could be illegal events. That's their, that, that's FBI agents taking notes. We have the Treasury, uh, over 100 Treasury suspicious activity reports. You or I would get uh, debanked after one suspicious activity report, right. definitely two. 
So, I mean, this is now, this is courtroom level evidence. It's not opinion, feeling, or emotion. So you got that. You got Shapley and Ziegler. Now, I was one of the first whistleblowers from earlier this year with my revelations of what, what went on. But now you got Shapley and Ziegler who said, right. hey, you know, we're being targeted. Uh, we're being, uh, we are formerly whistleblowers. Um, so you got their testimony and they said, you know, well, it's, yeah, absolutely, that we are being suppressed. DOJ is suppressing this. Politicals in the IRS and Treasury are suppressing this. So now you got the collapse and the third item collapse of the uh, plea deal uh, in, in federal court. Uh, federal judge was very upset. Uh, she was very upset on two things. One, that uh, Hunter's lawyer failed to disclose. Oh, by the way, uh, you're supposed to disclose um, uh, negative uh, 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 events in regards to the person being subject to possible plea deal. Mm -hmm. uh, they failed to mention uh, Shapley and uh, Ziegler. And then she says to the federal, uh, the DOJ uh, lawyer, uh, is there anything else being considered against um, um, Hunter? And uh, the lawyer didn't want to be perjured or be subject to a false statement. So they said, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So she goes, I, I can't, so hey, I can't approve this. So this is, this, this is wrong. And she was upset. Um, yeah. The one question and one answer that brought all the cards falling down right in front of them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, and then Devin, Devin Archer, the business partner. Uh, so he spilled the beans. So we got multiple witnesses. Uh, we got courtroom level artifacts. And so, uh, you know, uh, the, the House uh, side needs to get their act together and get moving on a, on a impeachment inquiry. And I know a lot on our side get upset, go, come on, come on, just impeach. No, no. The process is you go through an impeachment inquiry. Right. And this is where you got to start picking up players on the blue team because this ain't going to happen unless you get a certain number of blue players to go along with this. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just like I said earlier this year that, John, that's a really interesting story, what you've told about your your submissions to the Durham investigation and your whistleblowing. Where's everybody else? And then give it time. Well, over this year, we have, you know, almost 40 whistleblowers at this point in time. Wow. Um, same thing here. Give it time with the blue team. When they, when, when I guarantee you, when, when uh, uh, members of Congress and senators start seeing some of these courtrooms, you're gonna, we're gonna have to, we're gonna start peeling off members of the blue team. Mm -hmm. uh, they're gonna say, hey, I can't, I can't vote uh, uh, to uh, not impeach uh, uh, Hunter when I've seen all this courtroom level artifacts. No, I'm gonna. I mean, this guy is clearly dirty. Or, and, or, or Joe, or Joe Biden, or Merrick Garland, or yeah. uh, you know, or the Secretary of. Uh, Home, homeland Security, Mayorkas. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're going to find, I mean, you're going to get more and more blue members that are going to peel off and say, hold it, I can't, this is ridiculous. I Now that I've seen the 1023s and the SARS, uh, this guy's dirty. This guy's dirty. Now, I, and I was in office in 2014 when uh, members of the Obama team were furious with Chinese Island building. Now, did they know that at that time that Hunter and his dad were receiving money? That's when they first started receiving the money from China. Did they know about that? Uh, I tend to think most of them actually didn't know about that. Now, were they brought in you, later? You, Maybe you think you, th you don't think Obama knew about that? No, uh, actually, I don't. Uh, at that time, uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, Hunter and his dad are just such. They're you know, and and his dad was brought up in the Senate where you could just do whatever you want to do. Different mm -hmm. different rules set for that that world. And uh, so now, did they know about it later? Do were they did they uh, get a gratuity for? Yeah, I didn't tell you about this, but here's a gratuity. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not ruling that off the table either. Who knows? But. Yeah, I mean, uh, there was the Chinese island building started in 2014. I was in many meeting, uh, meetings at the very top, top of the, the uh, uh, Pentagon and the White House where, where Obama officials are furious with the island building. I, I tend to believe that actually most, if not all, at the beginning did not know what was going on. But I am, it, it all makes sense that mm -hmm. the island building coincided with the first round of payoffs to Hunter and his dad. That does make sense. Well, wow. you know, it's the old saying, right, John? You just follow the money. And yeah. and that's where, you know, uh, uh, Representative Comer and and the team have been trying, the Republicans have been doing. I mean, thank God that uh, the voters gave the majority of the House 
you know, to the Republican Party to investigate. Otherwise, we would have never known about this. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's all I mean, even in the New York Times, uh, they're trying to spin this, you know, and it's almost it's Trump's fault that uh, Hunter and his dad started taking money. I mean, and there's there's been that, you know, but they're always so smart and they're always so sophisticated at the New York Times. So they always have to have some rationalization of why it was OK that Hunter and his dad were taking money. And it's no big deal. Everybody does it. No, everybody. No, oh, come on. Give me a break. Yeah, that's 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 absurd. You're just uh, you, you know, you're just giving them accommodation and not holding them accountable. Uh, Colonel John Mills, uh, thank you so much for being with us and all the information that you have shared with us so openly and transparently. Uh, I appreciate your time, sir. Thank you so much. Hey, Bill, thank you. An honor to be on your show. Appreciate it. Colonel John Mills, the former director of cybersecurity policy strategy and international affairs at the Department of Defense. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us and uh, being part of the solution. And again, uh, you know, taking our admonishment to own your own knowledge, check it out for yourself. And then let me know what you think at bmartinezlive.com. For more information and to be a part of this mighty Martinez movement to return to God and to save our country, check it out, billmartinezshow.com. May God bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you and give you peace. Go and be blessed and then be a blessing. Thanks for being with us. Take care.